This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, so today's video is going to be a little bit of kind of an unorthodox video because I'm gonna be offering up some random street photography tips that you know I just wanna share with you guys because I, I was looking through some of my old videos and I know I made a beginner street photography tips video, then I also made like an advanced street photography tips video, but there was a lot that I think about now that I feel like I left out and they are actually really important in terms of, you know, not only technical settings, gear, but also just building confidence out on the street and, you know, kind of making sure that when you're out there making photographs, uh, you're present in the moment and that you have full confidence in yourself to be able to make these photographs. Um, you know, a lot of what I hear when people go out to make photos is that they feel a little bit awkward. And so I'm going to do my best to offer some tips today to help mitigate that feeling and give you guys the secrets that I personally use uh, to get you more confident out on the street. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. A lot of people, when they think about street photography, I think they always, always, always over-exaggerate. You need to shoot in manual mode. And don't get me wrong, manual mode is great. You have full control over your exposure. But with that said, it can also be a little bit of a downside. So street photography is all about how reactive you can be to a situation when it poses itself in front of you. If you make the slightest mistake in your exposure, there are a couple of things that can happen. You could be you know, fumbling around trying to get your camera set up and then you could miss the photograph because that entire moment already you know, just flee in front of your eyes, it's gone. Or you could already have your camera set and you take that photograph, but because you are in manual mode, you didn't get the proper exposure. Maybe you changed into a, a different setting and the lighting is different and your exposure is gone. So, you know, one thing that I would recommend that I feel like a lot of people should take advantage of are, you know, to shoot with those automated settings in your camera. Now, the two that I would personally recommend would be shutter priority and aperture priority. Program mode, you know, if you want to go that route, definitely go that route. If you just don't want to think about exposure, I think pro program mode is great. I have no problem with it. But the two that I personally use are shutter priority and aperture priority. Now, the main reason why I use this is because of the 1 2 50ths of a second rule. When you're out on the street and somebody is moving and there's action out there, the slowest shutter speed that you can have to be able to freeze motion, uh, most motion I should say, is 1 2 50ths of a second. So let's start first with shutter priority. Shutter priority allows you to select your shutter speed and your camera will automatically select the aperture. Now the two things you do still have control over is your ISO and of course the shutter speed. And this is great because if you're in an area where there is a lot of moving action, you wanna make sure that shutter speed doesn't drop below that magic number so that you can freeze the action and get everything in focus. Uh, you don't want to risk motion blur uh, with a slower shutter speed. So, you know, that's a great way to get started. Maybe use shutter priority. But personally for me, I care a lot more about the aperture than I do with shutter speed because the aperture allows you to basically control your depth of field. And there's also a way you can use aperture priority to still manipulate your shutter speed to be over 1 2 50ths of a second, even though your camera will be selecting the shutter speed for you. So here's the trick that I use. When it's super sunny outside, the one variable that I tend to over adjust for is ISO. When it's sunny out, and let's say I only need 200 ISO, I'm going to shoot that ISO up to about 800 or 1000. The reason for that is because when you shoot that ISO up, and let's say you're you know selecting your own aperture, maybe you're at 5.6 or f8, so you can get you know nice deep depth of field, a lot of things in your frame and focus. Your shutter speed, though, folks with a high ISO is still going to need to be fast enough to compensate for that. So when you do that in trade, your shutter speed should never really go below 1 2 50ths of a second. When you over adjust, you know, your ISO by maybe two to three stops, that shutter speed, despite what aperture we're at, um, of course, you're going to need to kind of play with it, should stay above 1 2 50ths of a second. And the way to tell is you set your camera up, let's say it's sunny outside, I'm at 1000 ISO, I'm at f8, 
now you move your camera around and you pay attention to that shutter speed. And if the shutter speed is above 1 250th of a second, you know that you're at a good ISO. Generally, I'll keep it at like 1 500th of a second and I'll adjust my ISO till it gets there. So that's a little trick that you guys can use so that you can not only stop the motion and you know capture things without any motion blur, but you can also really focus on your aperture and utilizing that aperture maybe for things like zone focusing um, or just being able to get a lot of more things in focus. Now the next tip that I have for you guys is going to be talking about your camera strap. So when you, let me grab a camera first. Now whether or not you shoot with a camera strap, we can all agree on one thing. When your camera is on your neck and you're just walking around, there's a small delay in recognizing a scene in front of you, grabbing that camera, looking at your settings, pulling it up to your face, focusing and making the photograph. Now with this tip, it's really, really simple. All we are gonna be doing is mitigating the time it takes for you to grab your camera, set it up and make the photograph. Folks, we're going to be pretty much putting yourself in position to capture a photograph at any given moment in time. Now what you wanna do, folks, is you wanna grab your camera strap and just wrap it around your wrist. So if you don't have a camera strap, that's fine, just hold the dang thing. We talked about this earlier, street photography is all about how reactive you can be to a situation. So in order to kind of, you know, mitigate any risk of you potentially missing a photograph, always have your camera ready. And one way that I like to do that is to take my camera strap and just keep it wrapped up here. Uh, there's a little meme going around about, you know, photographers that have, you know, their, their camera ready on their wrist like this. They're just like ready to go. They're, they're always prepared. Uh, and you know, even though it is funny, it's true. It, it's always true when you have your camera on your wrist like this, it means you're not playing around. You're serious. And uh, at any given moment in time, it's right there ready for you to go. The benefit though of having a strap opposed to not having one, of course, is if you drop it, you know, you're safe. You still have that camera attached to your wrist. Keep that camera ready to go, whether that be on your wrist, whether that be using a shorter camera strap so it's closer to your face, but you always wanna to try to be prepared and ready to go. So those are the two that are related somewhat to gear. The next three tips, folks, are going to be talking about confidence with street photography and how you can go out there and feel good about making photographs. We're gonna be talking about you know, how to avoid confrontation. We're gonna be talking about overall just how to not feel awkward about making photographs. Um, but before we jump into that, you guys, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, as a photographer in 2022, one of the best ways to stand out from the crowd is to have your own personalized website. Now, Squarespace pretty much gives you all the tools you need to get started from award-winning templates that you can set up in minutes to an e-commerce shop as well as a portfolio. But my favorite new feature, folks, would have to be the dedicated videos page where you can share online content from YouTube or upload directly to your website to show off your work. So folks, if that is something you are interested in, if you want to get started with your own website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout. You guys can get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. All right, so the first tip that we're going to be talking about, folks, is trying to avoid making eye contact with subjects. We're going to be using a technique, though, that's going to pretty much allow you to make any photograph about anybody or anywhere in the world um, and you won't really feel awkward. It's just using this one simple technique and this is something that I've taught in the workshops that I've done in the past um, and that folks is called misdirection. All right, so let's say, oh God, that was bad. <laughs> All right, so let's say you're out and about and you have your composition set up and you're waiting for somebody to kind of just walk through the frame, but they make direct eye contact with you. Uh, what that does for both you and the subject is it, it just kind of gives you an awareness of each other. He's aware of you about to take a photograph of him being in it, but you're also aware of him knowing that he's aware. So it, there's just a lot of tension that comes with that. And most of the time, a lot of people will just put the camera down, they'll say, oh, sorry, and they'll walk away. Missed opportunity, missed photograph, we do not want that. We want to be able to make 100% of the photographs that we take. So what can we do? to eliminate any awkward tension between you and a subject. Folks, the first things first, we just avoid eye contact. If you can avoid eye contact, that is great. If you can't, use this next technique. 
So the next technique is called misdirection. It's actually a term used uh, for magicians where they'll direct their attention to something while something else is happening right over here. What that does for you and the subject folks is if you are you know, taking a photograph of a scene and somebody is gonna walk through the frame that you wanna capture in there, if you just even turn your face slightly this way and you focus on a landmark within that scene, maybe it's a tree, maybe it's a fire extinguisher, maybe it's a garbage can sitting right here on the left side. Any type of body language that you can you know, give off to show that your attention is not on them even though the camera is that can help you get into position to where if they do look at you and see what you're doing it looks like your attention is on something else you're misdirecting your attention to something while you're capturing the photograph and you're doing this in a very ethical way you're not going to do this for anything weird folks this is for street photography purposes only you know if you are trying to make photographs out on the street you're just looking ahead maybe you're looking at the the tree right there and they walk through the frame you make the photograph that's it you give them a smile you walk away that's it right but this is a great way for them to know that you know they're not the main focus of the photograph you know especially if it's a scene and you just want to capture people within that scene because if you're taking a photograph and you're just like tracking somebody as they walk or you're just looking at them and you're mean mugging them as they're going down that is going to give you know, some uncomfortable vibes. And obviously it's not going to end well for you, especially if you avoid, or if you're afraid of confrontation, they're probably gonna say something like, hey, are you taking a photo of me? What are you doing? You know, it's just a whole mess. So use the misdirection technique, set your body up to not really, you know, be engaged in the moment while you make that photograph. It's going to make everybody around us just feel a lot more safe and a lot more comfortable. Just don't make it extremely obvious. Like if you're gonna take a photograph over here and you're just like in la la land, of course, you know, you want, you don't want that. You want things to look really natural. So, you know, I'm taking a photograph of you guys and I'm just looking over here, right? So my body's still facing forward, but my intention's over here. I look at the camera a few times and I look back this way. That's misdirection, folks. Now on the topic of, you know, making everybody around you feel safe and comfortable, street photography already puts the photographers at risk. You're out making photographs of, you know, random scenes, sometimes of strangers. Um, and there's a lot of things that really can go bad. Someone can get angry at you for taking a photograph. Somebody can question what you're doing. You know, there's a lot of, you know, crazy things that can happen. So one thing that you can control though, even though you can't control how other people react, is how you you carry yourself out on the street and the one thing that you don't want to do while you are out doing street photography is carry yourself in a way that makes people feel uncomfortable you want to look approachable you want to look like you're not out there to do harm because you're not you're out there to make your art and so if you're walking around and you're just like me mugging everybody you're looking around and you know you're making eye contact with people and you're like what are you looking at you take a photograph of them obviously it's not going to be a good look so folks you know, when you walk around the city to make photographs, smile, you know, maybe even throw compliments out there. Even if you don't necessarily like what the dude is wearing, like if, if I'm a Niners fan and he's wearing a Raiders jersey, I'll be like, oh man, that's a nice jersey, man. Is that brand new? It looks good. You know, compliments, smiles, all of these smaller things are not only going to allow you to have conversation with people out on the street, but you have the opportunity to also make somebody's day. And there's a certain endorphin rush that people get, uh, you know, on both ends where, you know, you've complimented somebody or maybe you made somebody happy uh, that can carry over into your photography as you continue on because, you know, you don't always want to feel like on edge or have a lot of tension while you're trying to make photographs of strangers. You want to be able to feel like you're part of the environment that you can, you know, talk to other people. And one of the best ways to do that, folks, is just to carry yourself in a way that's more approachable, smile, you know, give compliments, make small talk with people all of that jazz. Now, let's say, you know, you're saying, Jonathan, what if I'm somebody who is introverted? I'm shy. I don't like talking to people. Uh, it's simple, folks. We already mentioned it. Just smile. If you make a photograph of somebody, give them a little smile, walk away. There's a, there's a really big power in that. Um, as long as your smile doesn't look like crazy, you're not like, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay I don't really like talking to people all that much either while I'm out making photographs so definitely don't think that you need to but it's a great way to kind of you know just break the ice around everybody especially within yourself 
That pretty much wraps up all of the different random street photography tips that I have for you guys. I think I'm going to title this video uh, how to be more confident in street photography because I think it's probably the more meaningful part of the video anyways. I, I know the first two were more technical, but um, you know these are things that I missed in a lot of the other street photography tip videos that I've made in the past. So I wanted to address those today get it out there because I'm always trying my best uh, to help out and hopefully everybody has a great week and you guys can make some amazing amazing photographs so thank you man for tuning into this episode I will see you guys in the next one as always middle to gay <sighs> shit I hit my hat that was bad <laughs>